Hey everyone, my name is Venelin, and in this video we're going to have a look at how to get started with Langchain using Llama 2.0. If you want to follow along, there will be a completely free tutorial that is available on mlexpert.io on which you can find the complete code along with a tutorial in text explanations and of course a link to the complete Google Club notebook that we're going to use. Why should you use Langchain? Well, the most important use case for using Langchain is to combine your large language models such as ChatGPT or Llama 2.0 with some external source of data. More of the common examples include PDFs, CSV files, external databases or external tools such as Google Web Searches, API requests and other tools such as calculators and even cont interpreters. So this is the main use case for Langchain and here is a summary of that. Of course, the library is available in Python, but there is also a version of it that is available in TypeScript. And I would say that the TypeScript support is very well maintained and the library is pretty much on a feature parity as well as the, as the Python library. So what are the building blocks of the Langchain library? The most important parts, of course, are the chains. And we have a foundational blocks, which include things such as the model wrappers. So if, for example, if you want to use ChatGPT or maybe Llama 2.0 or Falcon models, you can use those right within the Langchain library. You have prompt templates, which allow you to add parameters essentially to your prompts. So you don't have to just input some strings within your prompts to the large language models that you're going to use. Also, you have indexes and vector stores. Those are useful when you want to embed essentially your external data, such as PDF files, text files, etc. And then you have a memory components, which allow you to remember the conversation between the user and the chatbot. So this will allow you to have a session data, which you can pass into the large language model. So the chains are essentially the main building block within the Langchain library, and they allow you to combine the foundational building blocks right within the Langchain library. For example, you might have a chain that is a retrieval chain, which essentially uses the indexes and the vector stores in order to get some data from a PDF file. And then you will pass this data or this text to a large language model, and this is all done right within the chain. Of course, there are other ways to use the chains, and chains can be actually combined with other chains. I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. And yeah, chains are very powerful. You can create your own and uh, combine them in very interesting ways. And the final building block are the agents. So the agents are essentially a more powerful chains that allow you to do some actions based on tools that you provide them. And some of the more important or more commonly used tools are, for example, online search, where you can pass in the essentially the superpower to your large language model to search online for information. Also, you can pass paste in something like a code interpreter, which allow you to your large language model to run code against, uh, for example, Python interpreter. And you can call external APIs again to get some data. So you can imagine that you can build very powerful applications using those tools. So how do you install Langchain? Uh, well, it is as simple as pip install Langchain. And I'm going to show you how you can work with the library. I have a Google Club notebook with a T4 GPU and the link to this Google Co-op will be included into the text tutorial that will be available on mlexpert.io. And here are the installation libraries that we're going to use. The most important part is the Langchain library right here. We are also installing the Transformers library along with some helper libraries in order to get the Wama 2 to run on this Google Co-op notebook. And the final import is the unstructured library, which will allow us to read an external PDF file right here. So first, here is how you can essentially use Llama 2.0. And this is a version that is using the GPTQ library in order to run right within a Langchain pipeline. So essentially, you're initializing the model. In this case, we're going to use the 
one or two 13 billion from the block and you're passing in or creating this pipeline which is again from the transformers library here i'm passing in the model and the tokenizer along with the generation config and you can see the config right here and finally the most important part is to create a pipeline from the lang chain hugging face pipeline instance so this will be compatible with the lang chain and this is essentially the large language model wrapper that we are going to use in order to run this, you just have to pass in a string to the LLM, just as you would an alien model. And here is the result from this. You can uh, read that on your own. The next more important part is the prompt templates. Uh, as you can see, you can pass in some variables right here. And for example, I have a template that is specific to WAMA 2.0 and I'm passing in the system message right here and then the text. So this is the parameterized version of this uh, prompt template. And here I'm specifying that the text variable is going to be an input variable from this prompt template. And as you can see, I'm passing in the text, explain what are deep neural networks in two to three sentences. And when I format the prompt, right here you see that this essentially goes ahead and replaces the text right here with the text that we are passing in so this is how this prompt templating works and of course you can pass in this to the, your large language model and this should work just fine so next here is how you can create some chains and the um, more simple or probably the simplest way to create a chain is to create just an LLM chain this will essentially wrap your large language model and you can pass in a prompt and again you are calling just chain.run and then passing in the text this will replace the prompt right here and run the chain with uh, this prompt and yeah you are essentially getting the same output as just this one before so the LLM chain is very simple and here is how you can essentially combine multiple chains and I want to create a chain that is getting a summary of some text and it is giving uh, three examples of uh, practical applications so this will go ahead get this input and then run through the first chain then use this examples chain right here and in order to combine the chains i'm going to use this simple sequential chain on which i'm passing in the first chain which we've already created and then the examples chain and i'm again passing in the multi chain dot room with the text and know that i'm using the verbose equal to true so this is what we are going to get as an output since we are using the verbose output you see that we are entering this chain and this is the first response right here and this is the second one so when i finish the response and i strip the result you see that i'm getting the three examples that we've asked for practical applications from the second chain but the input was first given to the first one so this is how you can essentially combine multiple chains one after another one very popular application of lang chain is to actually create chatbots so in this example i'm creating a chat between a teacher and students so in our case i'm going to pass in this system template and know that i'm not using the actual wama 2.0 format right here so you might want to format this more properly for your use case and the template is that uh, the chatbot is actually an experienced high, high school teacher and the teacher is always giving examples and analogies so this is the system template and this is given from system messages prompt template from template as you can see i'm going to build these messages then a human message hello teacher ai message welcome everyone so essentially we have the system message then a human question a response from the ai which uh, of course you can manipulate as you can see and then this is the actual template that we're going to use and in our case i'm going to pass in the template that is going to be an artificial intelligence so this will replace this subject right here and then this will be the the text or the question that we're going to ask so for the text from this template we're going to press in or pass it this one and this is the format of the final example as you can see all the variables have been replaced from our template and in order to run this through our large language model i'm going to call a special method called predict messages which understands 
the messages right here. So the types, as you can see, those are not just strings, but there are uh, actually objects. And in order to get the result, I'm going to call the result.content. And yeah, as you can see, this is a response that is given to us. Next, I'm going to get the original Bitcoin paper. And this is taken from this markdown that is available on Satoshi paper repository, bitcoin.md. And this is, I believe, the original paper converted into markdown, which is, of course, the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system from Satoshi Nakamoto. And this markdown is actually loaded using the unstructured markdown loader. And you can see here that I'm loading the document. And the next part is to essentially get the text and convert it into multiple chunks since uh, this paper is quite long. And yeah, it can take a lot of uh, text in order to give the complete markdown to the model. So we are going to split it into chunks of 124, 1024 uh, characters. And this is how it will all work. So after this is complete, we are getting 29 chunks of text. And as you can see, the embeddings that we're going to use for this one is going to be a GTE large embedding. I'm not going to go into details on how and why I'm choosing those embeddings, but you can uh, go to the text tutorial and I'll include some more details about those embeddings. In this tutorial, we're using just open source models. So both the WAMA 2.0 model is open source and then the embeddings are also open source. So nothing from OpenAI or other closed source models within these examples. And yeah, I'm just ex embedding the query from the text. And this is going to give us, for example, for the first text, we're going to get this many, this number of vectors size and to just get all of the text and embed them within using the embeddings, I'm going to use the Chroma vector store. In our case, this will be a vector store that is uh, actually adding the documents embeddings within a local directory call, which we're going to call DB. And in our case, you can query this similarity search and look for some text. And then you can specify how many text or results do you want to get. In our case, I'm going to specify two. And this is the first response that I'm going to give. And this is actually going to be the text that we're going to pass into the large language model. I am adding a template right here, which we've already seen. I'm using a prompt template right here for the context and the question. And the context is actually this text right here. And the question that I'm going to ask in how does proof of work solves the majority decision making problem, explain it like I'm five. And in order to run this, I'm going to use a special type of chain, a retrieval Q&A chain, which I'm going to pass in the model. I'm going to embed everything as stuff. And then I'm going to add the database as a retriever. And I'm going to get only the first two results. I want to also return the source documents. And then for the argument, I'm going to pass in just the prompt, which is essentially this template right here. So this is the response. You can see that we are getting the query, the result, and then some source documents. And if you look through the result, uh, you will see that the model is actually using the correct response format and it is explaining like M5. I urge you to go through this explanation. It's very good actually from WAM 2.0. And then I'm asking another question, very similar to this one. And you can see that it takes about seven to eight seconds at least to or answer the first one and then about 16 seconds on this GPU in order to respond to the first one. And this is the response from the second one. Finally, we're going to have a look at the agents. And in our case, I'm going to create a Python agent, which is going to be called from this function create Python agent from the agent toolkits. And here I'm passing in the large language model, again, the WAMA 2.0 in our example. And then I'm, for the tools, I'm going to pass in a Python repo tool. So this will be our interpreter that the agent is going to use. And I'm going to show you how this is going to be used with the verbose equal to true. So we look through the way that this agent is actually running. 
And here is the question that I'm passing in. Calculate the square root of a number and divide it by 2. So we are using the repo tool and we're given a warning that this can execute arbitrary code. So yeah, you should be careful with that, of course. And just for you, I've actually got this code and executed it. You can see that the actual result is actually 2, but still very good thinking in order to come to the conclusion that the answer is actually wrong, but still the, the idea and the method was uh, quite good. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below if you want to have a look at other videos that are related to Langchain or Wama 2.0. Please also join the Discord channel that I'm going to leave down into the description and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.